Heather. And I'm Alex, and welcome to Plant Fact Friday. Today we'll be talking about something very cool that we are dying to tell you about. Uh -oh. And here's some clues. So here we have some different natural materials. We have black tea, turmeric, bougainvillea, black bean, and hibiscus flowers. Any idea what the heck these all have in common? Hmm. Could it have something to do with dyes? It does. These are all beautiful natural dyes. So we'll be talking about natural dyes today and the different colors that they can um, make and how you can get involved with the natural dye activity that we're doing next Saturday. So first, let's start with some history. So imagine that you're alive before the year of like 1850 or so. You'd be pretty old, congrats. <laughs> um, but you, if you wanted to color any fabric, your clothing, fibers for art, you would be using natural dyes. And I want to talk about some of the oldest dyes that we know about. Now the first one is a beautiful reddish purple color called Tyrian Purple. Beautiful. And it is really lovely. And it comes from this guy right here. It's derived from the mucus of a sea snail. How delicious. Yum. Um, it was discovered in the city of Tyre in the Mediterranean in 1200 BC. So, or sorry, 12, yeah, 1200 BC. That's about 3000 years ago. And legend has it that Hercules, you know, from the movie. Oh, that guy, yeah. He was out walking his dog and his dog bit into a sea snail and his mouth turned purple. And this is how they discovered they could create a purple dye from this sea snail. Very cool. And it became a really popular dye, really expensive too. So the Phoenicians, the Greeks, the Romans, only the wealthiest, uh, the ruling class were able to wear this special color. Beautiful. Okay, another ancient dye we know about is called cochineal. And it's a deep crimson red color. And it comes from a tiny, tiny scale insect. If you uh, are a houseplant lover and you've ever seen these little guys on your plants, you just want to crush them between your fingers. Yes. Well, someone did that and they came out with, it, with red all over their fingers. This specific species of scale insect that lives on cacti creates this beautiful red dye. It's been used uh, first by the Aztecs and Mayans and later by most of the world um, since the second century CE. And, uh, now it is still being used in cosmetics and paints, believe it or not. Very cool. Okay, one more ancient dye is indigo. Now indigo, it, some of the oldest samples of dyed fabric we have are dyed with indigo. The oldest being 6,000 years old. Now indigo, the true indigo is a plant called indigo tinctophora. But we have an indigo here in Iowa and a lot of the United States called false indigo. And you can also create a dye with that plant, but it's not quite as potent as this indigo. Now today, most of our clothing, most of our fabrics are dyed with synthetic dyes, but natural fibers or natural dyes are making a comeback with artisans and people who are trying to be a little bit more sustainable. So Alex, how could we create a natural dye? So first you want to start with your fibers and it's best to use once again, natural fibers like wool, uh, cotton or even silk because the dye will really adhere to those fibers best. Now to increase your vibrancy of your color, you can also use a mordant. And here we have alum, which we use for that. So you can boil your fabrics with the mordant, um, it's just to clean the fabric, but also help the dye adhere. So once you prep your fabric, it's time to prep your dye. So here, if you pretend with us, we have a pot of water here. We're gonna dump, this is onion skins we'll be making today, pretending today. <laughs> dump your onion skins in. You wanna have enough water in your pan that they're fully submerged and you're gonna boil this, simmer it for at least 20 minutes. The longer that you boil, yeah. the stronger the color. You could even go overnight and yes. get a very deep color. D deeper colors are obviously better for your dyes. Now, after you have that, you're gonna strain the liquid and this is our onion dye that we have here. Yeah. Then you're gonna add in your fibers and you can add rubber bands to make some cool designs. You can even use eyedroppers to put the dye on. But if you submerge this in your dye, once again, gonna simmer or boil that for at least 20 minutes. Same thing here, the longer that you simmer, the longer that it's in that dye, the stronger the colors that you're gonna have. So Heather, tell us a little bit more. This is the onion. Yeah. This is the color that we have. Tell us more about some other colors um, that we have here. So botanical dyes is a really timely topic for us because it is Black History Month. And one of the figures that we like to talk about 
this month and every month is George Washington Carver. Um, most people know of George Washington Carver for being the scientist who came up with 300 uses for the peanut, but few people know that he was also a botanical artist. So he dabbled in weaving and crocheting and painting, and he often used natural pigments in his works. And because he was a scientist, he wrote down a lot of his creations. And thankfully he did because we were able to recreate some of his dyes. So we've already talked about onion skins. Um, you can see here what we've created. And this is just a, a sample of the color it can create. Kind of a light brown. Yeah. And we also have here pomegranate. Some people might be surprised that the rind is actually used to create the dye. And it's kind of this orangish color. And then we have two examples of sweet potato dyes. So the regular orange sweet potato creates this nice, it looks kind of like orange juice, not the best for dyeing, but we have to do the experiment maybe to figure out the maybe results. Maybe we did it longer. Yeah. I don't know. And then we have purple sweet potato, which makes a really vibrant purple dye because of all that anthocyanin pigment in there. And it actually works really well dyeing our fabric. But there's one other thing that we can do with that purple sweet potato dye. Alex, tell us more. Yes, so what we can do with some of these dyes, like the purple sweet potato, like Heather he said, or purple cabbage, yeah. is they can be used as a pH indicator. So to determine how acidic or basic something is. So here we're gonna try a little experiment. Here we have our purple sweet potato dye in all three of our test tubes here. So you can see the nice purple dye liquid that we have in all three of those. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to add a base, which is baking soda, to this test tube. And Heather is going to add an acid, which is vinegar, to this test tube. And if all works correctly, they <laughs> should change colors and they should be different colors. Okay, so are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Woo! Okay, I'm adding so the So we're vinegar. having some reactions. It's turning pink. So Heather's adding the acid and it's turning pink and mine on this side, I've got lots of bubbles. Yeah. I'll add a little bit more. That's I think it's more. kind of turning a blue color. Oh yeah, that's totally wow. teal. Very cool. So it's just an indicator for that pH, how acidic or basic. And again, this is a purple sweet potato dye, but it also works with purple cabbage. Yeah, and totally something, if, you're, if you think this is super cool, you could do this at home. Yeah, very easy. But if you are interested in doing some botanical tie dye and you don't want to risk getting your kitchen dirty, come get our spaces dirty. We invite you. Yes. <laughs> so next Saturday, we're leading a uh, botanical dye drop-in program from 11 to 3 here at the garden. You can create a cool botanical bandana to take home. Uh, dyed completely with natural dyes. And this is work at your own pace, socially distanced, um, but we'll be there to provide the instruction. And if you want to learn more about black figures in horticulture and uh, agriculture, come visit us for the rest of the month because we're celebrating Black History Month with a special scavenger hunt and displays throughout the garden. That's right. Well, okay. thanks for joining us. <laughs> Bye.